You counterspell Revivify. I cast Catapult on the dead PC. <laughs> we <laughs> are not the same. Hey everybody, Ground Life Point here and welcome to Pathfinder as a review. Uh, how are you guys doing? Welcome to another, I guess that's what it is now. Uh, hope you're having a wonderful day today. Before jumping into the video, I want to quickly kindly ask if you're not yet subscribed to the channel. Consider doing so now. It only takes a moment uh, and, uh, you know, you can undo it later if you change your mind or anything. And with that being said, thanks so much and I hope you enjoyed the video. DD official Twitter ranks top D20 roles. Top 20 D20 roles ranked. First, we have the natural 20, which is, you know, obviously, because it's like the best one that you can have. Um, then we have the 19, which is pretty close, it's not as good as natural 20, but nothing can be, so it's the next closest possible best thing. Then we have an 18, which is as close as possible to that after the 19. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then it goes through each and every single number uh, from 20 to 1 in order. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't ask me why I know this. How low can a creature's int be before seducing it is considered bestiality? 7. What the f do you know this? Um, okay, that's that's interesting. So okay, so seven is the highest possible, right? It, if it's six, it's not okay. I really hope that the reason why they know the answer is something safe for work and completely normal. <laughs> Step wizard, what are you doing? DM with 70 s grade acting. Oh no, I seem to have grouped all these enemies within uh 40 feet of each other, and they're way down on the initiative order. Our first time wizard who just got fireball. <laughs> he looks happy. That's that's all that matters. Can't believe that armor is so poorly matched to their real life equivalents. Like we have leather armor that gives 11 AC and then somehow plate which gives 18? Like that doesn't make any sense, right? That's that doesn't seem accurate to real life. <laughs> know your place. 1d12 and 2d6. <laughs> And then the 3d4, <laughs> both mocking him, okay. I mean, it depends, I guess, right? It's It just makes it less likely to roll uh, super low or super high. And it makes it <clears throat> more likely to, to roll something around the middle value. Murder hobo games be like Rogues solving murders with uh, looking for clues Clerics solving murders with uh, <laughs> resurrection Welcome back, who killed ya? And then my players solving murders. Well, of course I know him, he's me. The DM waived the requirements because they wanted to see how this would go. Monk, who made Int their dumb stat, but decides to mold the class into Wizard anyway. <laughs> I'm doing a thousand calculations per second and they're all wrong. Baby DM, scared of sneak attack and action surge. Lol. New DMs writing house rules to a game that they've never played. <laughs> okay. I call this device the Schrodinger's wisdom save. DM. This campaign, we're switching things up a bit. Whenever you need to make a wisdom save, drop your d20 in this opaque jar so only I can see the results. Is there a problem, Metagaming Bob? Yes. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it should be a problem, okay? I mean, it shouldn't, but like, it's good that he's admitting it at least, and the fact that he's admitting it <laughs> means that he's not cheating in other ways, I suppose. <laughs> That's why I'm interpreting it as a good thing. Auto hits are a hell of a thing. DM. Alright, so the Marot makes two slam attacks against you and you take 120 damage. Wait, what? It has to make an attack roll, doesn't it? Says the player. <laughs> Marot. Who decided that? Can't hate the Traveler argument though, it is pretty rad. R slash DD memes to the 5th edition players. Has anyone seen other TTRPG players? Hold on, I got this. <clears throat> oh man, look at this. I made a homebrew 5th edition sci fi campaign for my group. I had to adjust some things, but we're having a blast. Other TTRPG players. There are better systems for that. Have you heard of Traveler? 5th edition isn't a one size fits all. Would it kill you to try something else? <laughs> But you are not Henderson. My OP character is gonna break your campaign. Me, a DM with a spine. <laughs> a bold claim. Oh wow, okay, so I, I was curious and looking in the comments. So the Henderson thing is a reference to an old D&D story about the player who quote unquote figured out how to win <laughs> Call of Cthulhu. Um, and it's a super long story, I'm not gonna get into that. Maybe I'll read it sometime, to, you know, in a separate video. But okay, alright. DM. You really like that character, don't you? <clears throat> Revivify. You touch a creep, blah blah blah, okay, you know Revivify. You've read this, right? Yup. Then you know you can bring the decapitated fighter back to life per this description, right? Yup. So you agree that casting Revivify is futile and your 5th level party can't help him. 
Nope, studies have proven that a head can remain alive 25 to 30 seconds after it's been severed. The wizard was next to the fighter when the trap was triggered and immediately started the cantrip mending. Its 1 minute casting time means that the two body objects are only 30 seconds dead when it instantly repairs the cervical spine. With the head no longer severed and 30 seconds left, I cast Revivify and bring Jim <laughs> Jimbo back from the dead. <laughs> She is the one named Sailor Saloon. Back in high school, I made a quick and dirty D&D based TTRPG about magical girls that I prepped as a one shot for my school's D&D club. I showed up on a day when only boys were there and said, I don't know what to tell you, I'm running a magical girl game today and I'm the only DM here. And all five of them played. They were so into it, I had them chanting to activate their powers. Do you know how powerful that makes me feel? Perhaps surprise unsurprisingly. <laughs> one of those boys graduated as a lovely young woman. That, that is beautiful actually. Um, hashtag she's the only one who chanted right. <laughs> Oh no, they were all chanting right. I had them unlocking their princess powers and getting competitive over fictional boyfriends and tuxedo mask ripoffs. May I someday recapture the energy I had that day? Oh boy, that, that does sound lovely and beautiful. I, I do hope that you some, some, you know, someday find something like that again. I tire of characters standing around waiting jokes. Turn-based combat. Player perspective with, uh, you know, this and then character perspective. <laughs> Don't let the limitations of a medium limit your imagination. I I mean, yeah, okay, I guess. Monk Diamond Soul be pro at life over death. Monk Diamond Soul gives proficiency in all saving throws. Realize that it says all and no exceptions nor specifics. Realize that this includes obscure saving throws, constitution saving throws and death saving throws. Make everyone at the table lose their <laughs> as they realize that Diamond Soul gives Monk the rare proficiency in death throws. <laughs> okay. Do people seriously not read spell descriptions? You guys actually think you can target objects with Eldritch Blast. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> Barbarian. I understand that reference and I hate you. DM. You open the chest and find the flanked work lab inside. It radiates holy violet light. Cleric. I pick it up. Cool. Write this down on your character sheet. You now have DR10 against lightning, plus 5 AC when within 20 of any party members, 20 feet I suppose, uh, but minus 5 AC when flanked. Also, the weapon is Vorpal, and all your hair falls out while you wield it. <laughs> uh, weird, but okay. Congratulations! You are now in possession of the Mace of Windu. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Real life random encounter. Guy on the subway sees my Dungeons and Dragons jacket. G. Hey! DD! DD is the best! Me. Yeah. I had the craziest DD thing happen to me. I assume we're going to talk about his current campaign or playing when he was younger. I got in a bar brawl for real. Like in real life? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A for real bar fight, and as it was happening, all I could think was, oh sh. This is just like DD. Oh. Okay. So I've got two dudes ready to kick my ass and I'm strategizing like it's all a game. You know, improve my armor class or disarmor or just anything. How'd that go? <laughs> That's the craziest part. In my head, I'm freaking out, but I'm also thinking like, what would Dripple my dwarf do? You know? Sure. Well, Drips would f***ing go for their legs. So you... So that's what I did. Really? Yeah, man. And it was a natural 20. A complete tackle to the ground. And that dude went down like a sack of potatoes. What about the other guy? As soon as the first guy went down, I scrambled over him and ran right the f*** out of there. Drippy knows when to get the f*** out of a bad situation. Move those dwarf legs and run, am I right? Wow. I, uh... I'm glad you didn't get hurt. My shoulder hurt for a couple of days. Adrenaline and all that. Dude glances around and sees what station we're pulling up to. Oh sh this is my stop. Gotta go. Thanks for the story. One more quick thing. Uh, do you wanna know why my guy was called Dripwell? Sure. Because he had a huge dwarf <laughs> Yo. He steps off the train but turns back to look at me with a big smile and a fist raised as he yells DND <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Um, I don't know how to explain this to you. I don't. I, I look up the translation, but um, this makes me think. Th there's only one thing that I can think of right now. It's it's. This is how it would be if Bombardier meet met D and D. Um, now I don't know what uh, what how to translate that to English. Okay, <laughs> I guess the tra apparently a translation for it would be lower class suburban punk. Um, so yeah, okay. So imagine if one of those, but like a Romanian per character like that. Um, you know that combined with D and D. Ah yes, this totally makes sense. Half plate medium armor with AC 15 and then chainmail heavy armor with AC 16. 
well, I mean, I mean, it would probably make sense. It's just that D&D doesn't account for the type of weapon and like the type of armor, right? There's no armors that would be weaker to specific weapons or damage types or stuff like that, right? This was a joke campaign. We had a human fighter, elven wizard, half-elf bard, dwarven cleric, tiefling warlock, dragonborn paladin, and a halfling rogue. And they were all brought together because the big bad evil guy <laughs> killed their families. <laughs> you can choose to make the most <laughs> basic pieces ever, or make interesting <laughs> And my D&D group went for the first option. Dead PCs are objects. You counterspell Revivify. I cast Catapult on the dead PC. <laughs> We <laughs> are not the same. Hmm. This would this actually be a way to test if uh you know something is dead? Like you cast catapult and then you know that if it works, it's an object, so it's dead. <laughs> That's big brain stuff, okay? You should keep that in mind and maybe use it sometime. <laughs> Deals minus one damage in unarmed strikes. Life domain cleric with good berry. You're just a cheap <laughs> knockoff. Volos guide cobbled the dumped strength. Oh no 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 no, I'm the upgrade. Our party is level 2, there's no way the DM expects us to fight that. Your next mission is ready. Calm. You need to fight a dragon. Panic. It's an adult and maybe ancient by now. <laughs> Panic. <laughs> and she's blue. And panic overload, I don't know. Well, good thing that you don't have to take every fight that the DM throws at you, you know. The Dance of Dungeons and Dragons. I hate, hate, hate all those too edgy for me theories about kids shows. Like Angelica dreaming up the Rugrats, or the Ed, Ed and Daddy children being ghosts, or literally anything that takes a light-hearted and fun kids show and has to turn it into some tragic take or, of, or murder of, or misinformed mental illness. <laughs> yeah, there was also the one with the Foster's house of uh, imaginary friends or how it's called in English, uh, with the like girl being schizophrenic or something, right? So, you know what? From now on, I'm gonna do the exact opposite. Every cool grimdark show is now because of a bunch of children. To get us started. Game of Thrones. A middle school D&D campaign with the most angry, vindictive DM who has promised to kill everyone's player, characters, <laughs> and their families by the end. The Walking Dead is actually a bunch of kids playing zombie apocalypse in their neighborhood, and every time someone quote unquote dies, it's because their parents called them home for supper. <laughs> Breaking Bad is actually just a fanfic that the students in Mr. White's class write about him because no one has any idea what he does with his free time, and the running jokes about it got wildly out of hand. I took a break from D&D to play Call of Cthulhu one shot, and one of our D&D players who didn't join asked if we killed the big bad evil guy. I am back from a game of Call of Cthulhu with the guys. Did you win, Pops? You really don't know what Call of Cthulhu is. <laughs> well, <laughs> there was that story that I haven't read yet that I mentioned earlier about that reference with the player that learned how to quote unquote win Call of Cthulhu, so who knows, you know? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> On that note, that's gonna be it for today's video, so thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like if you did and spread for more if you haven't already. Also, thank you to everyone supporting the channel on Patreon as well as on YouTube, I appreciate it a lot, so thanks so much for those. Links below if you wanna check them out, as well as links to the social media, Discord, subreddit, emails. And uh, yeah, that's it, thanks again for watching, I'll see you next time, have a great day, bye!